So 18 months ago, my producers brought a live chicken onto the set. And now they brought Rex. Don't look at me like that, Rex. This is tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield, a billionaire entrepreneur. I'm more scared of this guy, by the way, than I was of the chicken. And the chicken was pretty scary. But the billionaire entrepreneur, Elon Musk, has warned that artificial, he blinks and everything, artificial intelligence is our biggest existential threat. However, Graham Brown Martin is an educator. He's a technologist. He's the founder of Learning Without Frontiers, believes it also has the power to transform education. This is tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield. That is Graham, the human. This is Rex. The, what do you call him without offending him? He's a, a humanoid autonomous robot. What does that mean? What that means is uh, autonomous is not linked to anything. There's no cable that's following him around. Mm -hmm. um, so he can wander around at, at his own volition. No, he can't. Um, he can. No, he can't. Do you want to show you? Yeah, go on, show me. Okay. What should I do? Oh, exploration. Hmm. Huh? Oh, he's freaky. I'll use my sonars to take a walk and explore my environment. If you want me to stop, just tap my head. Let's go. Oh, my word. Huh? And then it'll stop. If I put my hand in there. He said tap my head. I tapped his head. Obviously, yeah. not hard enough. So this is to show the sonar so that yes. he knows where he is. And then if I want to stop him now, yeah. I can just go. Okay, I'll stop. That's very nice of you. I mean, he's the same size as a two-year-old, but a lot more cooperative. <laughs> <laughs> um, when he's doing what he's told, or how he's been programmed, and it works fine, then, then yes. But there's certain aspects of him that are a bit like a two-year-old. <laughs> I mean, so. so you pre-programmed him to do a certain number of activities here with us, right? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah, I have. And, um, so you have to don't look at me. <laughs> you, have, you have total control? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I do have total control. I mean, it, it's it's quite difficult for this particular robot to go out of control. Um, but you know, there are things about that you know you need to be aware of. I mean, you don't really want to be putting your hand where under his leg when he's going to bend it, for example. No. But the, there's there's a lot of sensors in this, so it it knows which way up it is. It knows when it's falling and and so forth. Uh, but generally, no, this is not an, not an out of control robot. It would be quite fun to program him to behave like he was out of control. What? is his purpose. I don't want to demean him in any way in case he turns around and whacks me, but what is his purpose? What's yeah, he for? It's a fair, fair question. I mean, it, it, the, the purpose of this particular robot is designed for education and research. So he's uh, almost 10,000 brothers and sisters are um, in 70 countries, and mainly in universities and high schools. And the, the point of it really is, is a, it's a nine year research project so far. And it's two, it's, it's two aspects, principal aspects I mean, to, to it. One is encouraging young people to program the robots yeah. because there's a, there's a whole buzz around programming at the moment sure. as, as you know um, you know we want more stem graduates we want, we want more coding graduates and so forth but this is programming in a three-dimensional space so for coders that who, who are not inspired by your sort of 2d screen this is actually being able to do something outside the physical space he is very cute and unthreatening but Elon Musk South African born a guy who's doing crazy stuff in the United States and has got big plans to take us into space cheaply and off to Mars to go and colonize it he says this is the beginning of something very dangerous well and that's the second point about what this is about so the first point was about the computer programming and programming robotics and that sort of technical understanding. I think the more interesting aspect of why this uh, robot exists... The most exists interesting thing is he could kill me one day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, before no, I mean, then. Yes. Before then. Um, is that the point is, is for children and young adults to think about the moral and ethical aspects and how you engage with these types of devices. To give you an example, um, my, my, my young children, a nine-year-old and a 14-year-old, when we were talking about, okay, what should we program Rex to do, and it started off with the obvious things that you would as a kid, you know, tidy my bedroom, <laughs> make a sandwich, just yeah. those kinds of things. But then we started thinking about more, more, more complex things like do the gardening, go to the shops. Teach. And then we thought, hang on, well, what about, you know, the, what about jobs? What happens, you know, it, just because we can do something, should we? So then it, it catalyzed a conversation with my children and with other school children that I've worked with 
about some of the ethical questions around robotics. I mean, you have one nine-year project, and you've been going through this for the last nine years. You've got this book. It's, I think you're selling it at the University of Pretoria, which talks about learning, re learning reimagined. And you go back to the use of technology. And all of us accept tablets, for example. Computer tablets as being part of everyday education. It is what your nine and 14-year-olds, my six and three-year-old, will be using in school for the foreseeable future as an aid. And it's wonderful. It is a great addition to the classroom. Now, you're talking about this 10 years from now, this could be the teacher. Sorry, Rex, this. You, <laughs> Rex, could be the teacher. He looks very threatening. Um, <laughs> and that freaks me out. Yeah, should it? I, I think it should freak you out, Why? actually, because I think it's wrong. I mean, I, I think that there's a uh, misunderstanding around technology. I've been at the African Edu Week uh, mm. summit this week, actually, in, 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 jo in Johannesburg. Rex must and have gone down to treat yeah, him. Yeah, it was and, they, they people totally throw things him. at him yeah, because he's, totally. the, he's a threat to their of future. Course. And so uh, so we, we talked about that. That was why I was here. That's why I wanted to talk to them. And I think this, I this idea that technology will replace teachers is, is, is naive and reductionist. Um, we, we hear it a lot from Silicon yeah. Valley. That's because the guys in Silicon Valley don't get out much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, you know, they're not fun people. And, but it, it also reduces what teaching is, a, you know, they believe teaching is like a delivery system. Well, Te teaching isn't FedEx. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's, for now it's human. Just give me a demonstration of what Rex might be able to do in the classroom. Have, have okay, you got so program? How's, your, how's your maths? Lousy. Let's, <laughs> let's have him test me. Well, let's have a go. Let's see if you can answer uh, some of the questions. Jump off the cliff, Rex, if it's too difficult, yeah? How may I help? Math power. What's that? Oh, no, he's oh, he's being two. He's he, being a two-year-old. He's being a two-year-old. He's sulking now. I think we may have to do a little bit of a... A little a, reboot. A little reboot. So we've reset Rex because he was having a bit of a, a two-year-old temper tantrum. <laughs> the future of robotics. There's a really scary story around right now about a factory worker in Germany being grabbed and pressed against the steel plate by a robot crushed and killed. Now... I don't think it was malicious. Mm -hmm. um, but people, it, it's the sort of story that allows the scaremongers to say, look, we're being overtaken by yeah. sweet little orange and white robots like this. This is the beginning of something massively yeah. destructive for humankind. Thin end of the wedge type mm. thing, yeah. I mean, the, the story uh, about the worker that got killed by robots is horrific. I mm. mean, any industrial, inju 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 any industrial injury yeah. is horrific. And, you know, everything should be done to prevent those happening. And I think that society is, is absolutely wrong. Right, um, to question technological advance because I think that we live in a society where uh, whether it's the media or other or, or, or Silicon Valley companies who tend to think that, that, that society is determined by technology. This technology is happening so you just have to get used to it. Yeah. And, and we were going da down that road and I think you know the Edward Snowden revelations made us think, hmm, actually maybe all this stuff isn't so good. Technology and in the so wrong hands Exactly. And, 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 also, and, yeah. and I think that's why this is useful as an education tool. So young people now, before it becomes a fait accompli, before a, a, a large company mm -hmm. then says, okay, here's robots, you have to do it. They understand more about the, they have the vocabulary to, to mm -hmm. enter the debate. What, what, what's Max's nationality? He's French. So I he's, so. he, he's, he's, yeah. <laughs> he's got that he's, attitude. He, yeah. he's, he's, he's French, he's made by Aldebaran Robotics. Um, but he's funded, and, as one might expect, by Japanese money. Yes, I mean, it started off as, as a French funded company, but, but recently SoftBank in Japan, uh, the SoftBank Group, have uh, they've taken a 70% holding stake in, in, the, in the company. So they're very well funded as a, as a company. I mean, it's a very funky company in Paris, about 400 employees. Um, I mean, they've got the best jobs in the world at the moment, haven't they, yeah. uh, in, in terms of working with things like this. But I think, that going back to your earlier point, I think these, the, the issues around paranoia and fear and so forth, I mean, I think we need to question technology mm -hmm. we need to question you know, just because we can do things doesn't mean we should I mean, one looks at IBM's Watson project for example and how Watson won Jeopardy the very famous American quiz show Th but Watson feels a bit dated already um, the ability to access information using a voice command is kind of so last year or the year before Yes, and I think you know, one, I mean, one of the things we have to be mindful of is that processor power is getting much, much faster. I mean, we're probably about five years away from what's known as an exascale processor. Which, which is, is about, what's that? It's about the speed of your brain. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's which doesn't... But which my, the speed of my brain, <laughs> if, if robots are, uh, deliver that sort of activity, we'll all be fine. Yes. It's, it's the sort of processing power of your brain. Just because it's the processing power of your brain doesn't mean it's, it's sentient. Doesn't mean no. it can... You know, there's this whole thing around sentience and consciousness um, that is, is very difficult to quantify. And the suggestion that we can 
make sentient machines. Personally, I think is, 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 is nonsense. Mm. I don't think we can create sentience. I think that's something that's biological. I might be proven wrong, perhaps in my mm. life, lifetime, but, but it's something we need to think about. And I think when we start talking about artificial intelligence and creating sentient machines, as we move towards zeta scale processes in 2030, you, these are now, massively you, What's a zeta scale process? Times, a thousand times faster than your brain. Terrifying. This is, the issue yeah. there is you, know, you have computers which could, for example, do complex weather uh, uh, projections uh, in seconds rather than the hours it takes today or, 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 or sequence your DNA in, in three seconds. But the point is, I think, with this is, is understanding um, the difference between sentience and artificial intelligence. And if we are going to try and develop sentience, we need to think about what happens for the alpha and the beta versions. Yeah. If they are genuinely sentient, what do we do? We, we, we switch them off? We kill them? But I mean, then do we have the right to kill them? Exactly. <laughs> so, so, and this is the point. And this is why these things yeah. with children, because it's, it's got to be our children, really, that yeah. have to make these decisions. But they have to have the understanding and the vocabulary to partake in that debate. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, the technology industry would run away. I think, well, okay, what's actually happening in your laboratory? So I think it's important that our, our, our children and our university students are having those conversations now. Re Rex has definitely got a mind of his own. He's not rebooting <laughs> as fast as we would have liked. So unfortunately, we're not going to see him deliver us a little dance, which is a pity. But we got to see him in action. We got him to see him respond to a command. But the humanoid aspect of it is what I think will freak a lot of people out. Yeah, and, uh, the, but, but it's also for children. That's a very that's a compelling But we thing. react. When do, do you see that interaction? Do children sort of start treating Rex like a person? Or uh, is I, there don't, still I don't think we're at, at the point of emotional attachment. I mean, it's, it's interesting. I mean, children do make emotional attachments to teddy bears and, mm. and so forth. Sometimes those attachments last into adulthood. Um, we're not seeing that with robots. I mean, if we look at the video game industry, yeah. we're trying to get emo you know, you know, when you watch a film, it can make you cry. We haven't seen that with video games yet. So we've got a way to go, I think, in emotional design. If I dropped him on the floor, it would make you cry, though. I mean, he's... Um, he it, would, it, would make, it would make the owners cry. But he, actually, when you fall, if, you, if you knock him over, it's quite amusing as he stands up. But he's the price of... A mid-sized car? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's about 80,000 rand uh, for one of these at the moment because it's, it's, it's hand-built. Um, it, there's no, no air in there. It's a lot of components, similar amount of components to a small car, funny enough. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, very nice to meet you, Rex. When you wake up, maybe we'll see you <laughs> dance. Graham Brown-Martin, he's the educator, he's the technologist, he's the founder of Learning Without Frontiers, and, of course, Rex, who has become really obnoxious and really childlike. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. <laughs> may be presented by Rex if he's woken up by then. Good night and goodbye.